So we are looking at what we have called the Heartwood application, that's its code name. Um, and this is, I'm going to give you sort of the, the lightning intro, uh, the full demo takes a lot longer as you would imagine, but um, feel free to stop me if you have any questions or um, I can go through some other places afterward if you have um, things that you're interested in, but I wanted to highlight some of the places that I think are, um, sort of touch on what Dan and, and John had highlighted the best. So um, what we're looking at right here is um, what we call a workflow. So it's a step-by-step -step means of entering some entity into the system. In this case, it's um, an agreement. So agreement was the term that we all agreed on, um, I guess, <laughs> uh, to define any sort of um, arrangement between the trust lands management division and another party uh, pertaining to trust. So it could be uh, sale, like this one is a timber sale. It could also be just a right of way agreement. It could be um, an acquisition of new land. Um, so that's sort of our, our general framework is it's an agreement. And since we've been working with forestry, um, we have two main workflows for sort of the bigger timber sale type agreements and the smaller um, quick permits, like when you go get your, your fire wood permit or Christmas tree permit. So um, the first page is um, some sort of general details about the agreement, where it's taking place, um, the dates, who to contact about it, um, and then you can pick a customer. Um, I like to do um, ANS logging because they're on Elvis Presley Drive, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so that's my, my pretend customer for this one. I think it's a real customer, but it's a pretend agreement. Um, so this is the cool part. So you can upload your harvest unit. So part of what we um, sort of established in the data diagnostic phase was that there was a need for um, a concept of an agreement area. So that seems pretty self-explanatory, but um, there wasn't really a distinction between there are the trust areas, which are the, the blue squares that we see here, and then there's the area that's being directly impacted by the agreement. So, um, you know, if you're buying a whole square, then that's the agreement area and the trust area are the same thing. But especially in the case of, take this off so we can zoom in a little bit, of a timber sale, you have um, harvest units, which are these little um, stands of harvestable trees. And they don't really um, know about section boundaries, the trees just grow where they want. So as you can see, like this this nice stand of trees is cutting across two um, trust areas. So we want to be able to distinguish those. So um, in addition to trust areas and agreement areas, we introduced um, this concept of use areas. So that's the intersection between the two. So you know how much area is in each parcel. Um, so if we look again, let's turn our, our trust areas back on at our, our nice squiggly one here. So this has now been split up into two different pieces, um, one for each trust and that's, or each trust area. And that's especially important for one like this where actually there are two different trusts. So one is MSU Moral and one is Western Eastern. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're splitting the revenue get into how that works. So um, we have just the, the version that was calculated with the strict intersection. Um, so that's the calculated number here. Um, if you had a surveyor went out and did you know a, an on the ground survey and you knew the actual numbers based on that, you could fill those in, but we're just gonna use the calculated values here. Um, so the last thing you would need to do before you can actually start going out and cutting the wood is add the products last step in this workflow other than um, document upload. So I've already added those in. We have some fiber pulp and some saw logs. Um, so this one has already been entered and underway and uh, the customer is out on the ground cutting down trees, putting them on trucks, taking them to the mills. So um, this is where we get to find out how use areas work. So this is our, our truck ticket books. So we have a couple of truck tickets here for saw logs, um, cutting, cutting unit two and eight. 
And then we have some over here for, for fiber pulp in cutting unit 15. So we have a, a good range of, of products and locations. Um, and so what we want to do is we have all of these truck tickets that tell us how much wood was harvested and we actually want to go and bill the customer for that. Um, so this is our, our list of all the invoices that we have created and we are going to use this handy dandy generate button. Um, and so this is going to create invoices for every agreement that has truck tickets that haven't been billed yet. Two invoices. Okay, this is the one that we want. Okay, so if we click here, the first page just has a summary of what's been added to the invoice. So these are all the truck tickets that we just saw. Um, so this is representing three of the many cutting units, harvest units that are on the agreement. Um, it also went ahead and added a fee. So there's um, a couple of different types of fees, and some of them are billed with all loads. So every time we build truck tickets, we're also going to put these fees on. Um, and now we need to know where these are going, right? Once the customer sends a check, where does the money go once we distribute it? Um, so that is where the person making the invoice wants to come in and set the allocations. So uh, they're allocating the funds to each trust. Um, so if you go into this page, so we have a summary. So this is for every harvest unit, product, um, and trust area. So what's the total amount um, that we would expect to distribute out to that trust? Um, and then we have a summary for each truck ticket as well. Um, so if we look back at um, our, let's look at unit two. Our, our squiggly one here. Okay, so unit two, it looks like it's about 60-40 um, between the two trust areas. And then if we go over here, so this is a, a truck ticket, so the same ticket number shows up twice here because um, there's one for each trust area. Um, and then the value is split along those same lines. So it's about 60% to Eastern Montana. Um, and 40% to MSU. Um, and the fees are similarly split out. There's a little more adjustability on fees because some of them don't have uh, as strict of rules about where they're going to go. Um, so we look at that. We're excited. Like, okay, everything looks good. We're going to finalize the invoice. Um, so now it's all set and that's been billed and you can print off the version that you would send to the customer going to tell them how much they owe in this period and also gives a little summary of um, what was harvested, which truck ticket numbers were included on this bill. Um, and that's, that's the end of the invoice process. And after that, um, once they send a check-in, you would uh, apply the receipt and actually be able to uh, distribute that revenue off to the trusts ultimately. So that was a, a really quick intro to just, just part of the, the features, but I think it really gets at um, some of what Dan was talking about with integrating the spatial components, um, and then also um, we have a lot of, of rules under the hood making sure that all the money is accounted for and, and going to the right places.